understand from like a coach's standpoint that it's for team points and you want to try and win the match. But from my perspective, I just want a match. I want to be able to wrestle. I want to do the sport that I came here to do. And whenever I see people pull out wrestlers or bump them up to avoid me, it's annoying. It, and I recently read something about this. And wrestling, you should have belief in your wrestler that they can go out there and wrestle a match. Like if you, as a coach, believe that your wrestler has no chance, what are you doing coaching? You should be able to throw your kid out there and you should be able to have a wrestling match. No matter who the wrestler is, just enjoy the sport. Pay the cost to be the boss. Like it's just, that's just the way it goes. Um, nobody, I, nobody likes it. Uh, nobody likes going. You shouldn't, if you're in that position, you should not like get in a forfeit. Adler Moore is a kid that likes to wrestle. So whether you're a first year or returning New England champ or national champ, um, he wants to wrestle you. Um, I've never seen, I've never been around a kid that just likes, like, that hates getting forfeits. To my experience, even myself, like, I, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I get a day off, but he comes back and he's like fiery than he was before. And then I really feel bad for whoever he has next, whether it's the next match or five days later or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, but for him, I think he keeps everything in, in its own lane. I think he gets emotional at first, gets angry about it, but then immediately centers himself to go back out there and do what he has to do. Um, the one thing I've been impressed with him lately is when he when he used to get a forfeit, he would just kind of like not check out per se, but just go off to the side a little bit. Now he's becoming that full leader role of getting kids ready, talking them up, warming them up, and doing uh, the things he needs to do as a captain of this team. And really, as a junior, he needs to con continue to his senior year and then have the other kids watch what he does. So I've been impressed with how he is able to bounce back with that.
of our kids, the ability to be able to perform and do what we want to do, because the goal ultimately is to pin our guys, but I mean, I'm a big picture guy, and so I look at the whole state, I think it's also just we, as a state, have a pinning problem. I think guys get put to their back, and we can't fight off of it as well. Um, we're no different to that. I just think it happened to Bishop Gervin Memorial and Central. Um, I'm not mad at all that we were on the other end of putting kids to our backs and being able to, you know, and be able to finish from there. Um, but, I mean, there is something to be said about being able to fight off your back and not get pinned in, in certain situations. Uh, with that said, we do, every day we practice how to pin, different pinning combinations from different, d from different places. And I think we're finally starting to see that work pay off because we are pinning from different spots. It's not just the same, you know, get behind, grab a wrist, and then throw a half. It's like, no, we're pinning from like a cradle because they stand up and they just launch back. Um, it's all these different things, so I think it's a mix of all three, and you just have to be on the right side of it. I think it's more, it's more of like a mentality um, that the coaches like want us to be like aggressive. Um, you know, once the first whistle blows, everything that you know happened in your last match is not going to happen in this match. This is a new match. Um, you're going to work new moves. You're going to be aggressive on like with your hands, with your hand fighting, uh, working in um, collar ties and working them out of bounds, inbounds. Um, so yeah, it's more of like a mentality. <laughs> He looks like he could be my dad. He's such a big beard, but um, and uh, like you know, that's obviously a little bit of an intimidation factor. But then, you know, I stop and think like it doesn't matter, you know, beard or not. If I just go out there and I wrestle as hard as I can and be tough, like that's all that matters. If I just go and do as best as I can, and the outcome is either win or a loss. Just do that. Just do what I know, and that ended up working out for me on Saturday. I saw this kid around the corner and I was hoping he was on Chase's weight class, but of course, you know, luck's, 
luck hasn't been on my side with that sort of stuff. So I immediately thought, like, great, Chase is going to see this and immediately get intimidated. And, you know, he, he was, and he's man enough to admit that. Um, but in the same respect, though, Chase is the personification of ignorance is bliss. And I think he just is so naive to a lot of different facts of when he gets out to that match that it doesn't really matter. I think he's two different people. I think there's Chase before the match that gets, like, a hard warm-up in and then you know, talk, talks himself through of like, I need to go out there and do this. And as he hits the mat, he's like, oh, it's, it's just another guy I'm wrestling. So to be able to flip the switch like that is pretty cool. Chase was able to go out there and beat a kid that looked twice his age. I think it was it was really cool, and especially when you have some of the younger guys, such as uh, you know William, Clayton, Jonah. When they see things like that, I, I hope that they think that they can do it too. I'm assuming he's a tough, hard-working kid. With that said, though, there's Hollis, who's just a freak of nature athlete and one of those kids that can just do anything he puts his mind to. When you see pictures of him just, like, lifting up people and then putting them down, it's you know, it's almost stoic, right? Like, it's, like, the picture-perfect picture that we need for, like, wrestling. Um, but he's firing on all cylinders, though. It's not just a big, strong kid. He's finally coming to his own. Um, We've talked about this before, and I think he'll even say it himself. The version that we have now of Hollis would absolutely maul the person that came in here. Um, not to say that he's any stronger or faster or whatever. He's just more aware of what he needs to do.
out there and um, just about win every single match minus a couple and then we had some forfeits because we can't fill the weight class but it is what it is. Um, that's good. Being able to then beat Bishop Garden, which has historically always been a top three, top five Division two team, um, is really huge for this team as a confidence booster. With that said, though, we had the goal, all right, we didn't meet our goal with Plymouth. Now our next goal is to beat Bishop Girton. We then did that. Now it's starting to become, all right, well, we did one goal. Is that enough, or do we have to keep putting on the throttle a little bit? Um, so the coach perspective, of course, we wanted to keep putting on the throttle and keep, you know, keep this thing going. Um, but I do think there is that bit of comfortability. They're like, oh, yeah, no, we already did that. All right, season's over. Um, so trying to be, as a coaching, as coaches and uh, as a coaching staff, we need to be able to mitigate that problem somehow. So um, I do think these kids are pretty dedicated to the actual task at hand. We just have to keep reminding them that we're working towards a bigger goal. Beating three division, two Division One teams and one Premier Division Two teams is great, but you don't get banners for that. You don't get a trophy for that. You just get a, another WTU record. I think we were all just, we wanted to win. Especially after the loss to Plymouth. I think we were all ready to go out there and we wanted to show everyone that we're not a losing team and that we're not a team that can be messed with. So when we came out there on Saturday, we were ready to wrestle and we did whatever it took to win. At the end of the day, whatever's on paper, D1, D2, D3, it comes down to the, the skill of wrestle you have. And on Saturday, everyone performed exponentially well. Everyone wrestled with a lot of technique. Everyone you know, pushed really hard. And I think that was very good for us. It was very good motivationally, you know, coming off of Plymouth and everything like that. It was great for everyone to wrestle hard and win, but I think also everyone understands, like, we wrestled really tough and we wrestled really well, and that's what let us win. But, you know, obviously there's still a lot of work we have to do considering coming off of something like Plymouth where we had this, like, very, like, on-the-edge matches. So I think it was great to kind of boost our confidence, and I think it was also good to show that we are good wrestlers and that we – learned a lot even just from that little space of time between Plymouth and now. That's great for even the JV as, as well as varsity. Um, being able to have those matches and being able to have the experience and see different moves that, you know, like the higher divisions and see what they do. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great day. It was a lot of great wrestling. Even though it was a short day, it was really good uh, for our technique um, to prepare ourselves for the state tournament. Um, because we may not see these kids in the states, but if some of us place high up in the state tournament, um, we might as well see them in MOCs. Uh, so it was good. Yeah, I think it was a good confidence booster. I mean, especially after the uh, loss to Plymouth, we were able to go out there. We were able to beat all three teams pretty soundly. Um, I don't think any of our guys are overconfident or too cocky. I think we all know where we're at and what we need to do. Um, yeah, I think that, that's all. It's definitely been great being at home, you know, that home crowd, having, like, you know, setting up our lights and getting the spotlight and everything. But I think it's also good to get on the road, kind of travel, get some experience in. And obviously, we have seen so he can wrestle, but that was also very early in the season, so we don't know how much they've developed, but they also don't know how better we've gotten as a team as well. So I think we're going to go into it and not overestimate them or underestimate them. Take them as, you know, any opponent we would, just be there and do our best. I'd like to think that the kids who uh, have big matches coming up in this Sauhegan meet, they're going to be able to look back on their matches that they had earlier in the season, and they can watch it over, and they can look at film, they can go over what they need to do, and pull out of those matches much better than at the beginning of the season. Because if you go back and look, everyone's improved since that, that meet. Every single wrestler in this room has gone better since the meet with Condal and Sauhegan. So hopefully when we go out there this Wednesday, it's going to be a completely different match, and everyone's blown away with the theories. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really good because we have that understanding of like some of what the kids are going to do. Um, a lot of our JVs got exhibitions there, so it was kind of like an eye-opener of like the varsity kids when we're watching. Like, okay, what are they working? Like, how can we set up right here? Like, what can we do to defend when they take a shot? Um, I think it's really good. I think that um, it's almost like scouting almost for football, so... We always watch film about it, so I'm, I'm sure we'll get Sahigan film and we'll probably watch them as well and uh, see what they do and uh, see what their tendencies are and what we can do.
Watch out, get loose, keep moving, get your body moving again. foundation of the team and I think we all have each other's backs and we're all ready to work together and, and hopefully be able to be the top D3 team.